even when no one is watching. Don't choke me. Don't choke me. Don't choke me. Everybody, welcome to Logan for Liberty. How are you all doing? I hope you're all fantastic. So this is my first uh, comic book review video. I've kind of talked about comic books before on this channel, but I've never really reviewed something. And at the same time, which makes this video very special, at the same time, this is also my first uh, comics gay comics gay adjacent. Uh, sort of review and the reason why I'm choosing to review pandemic first is because this is the most recent one that has been fulfilled and it kind of is a perfect way to lead into what comics gate is give you a slight introduction of who this Meyer character is so I just want to state that uh, well I guess I'll start by saying what this is so pandemic is in Meyer's own words, Richard C. Meyer's own words, an experimental, I would say, social slash science fiction comic book, social fiction, science fiction, which is written by Richard C. Meyer and drawn by Renzo Rodriguez and covered, sorry, colored by Michael G., which all that information is right there. And Richard C. Meyer is also known as uh, Comics Matter with your boy Zach on YouTube. So if you are interested in maybe anything he has to say after watching this video, go ahead and check that out. Or you just want to get to see the content of from the guy who made this comic book, then go ahead and check it out. So this is an interesting comic because it's a way of ta talking about current events. It's a way of being topical. So before I really continue with that, I mean, giving background information on Richard C. Meyer. So Richard C. Meyer is a veteran. I believe he served in the Marines, served, did his contract. I think he served three or six years. I can't remember. Eventually, at some point, so he honorably discharged. At some point, I believe he enlisted in the army. I don't know how long he was in the army. If he's still in the army, all I know is he's a veteran. He served in both the Marines and the army and he's part of a movement called comics gate which is opposed to what i would describe as the sort of dogmatic over saturation of politics and social justice in modern day comics and it's from my perspective it's not that comics gate is inherently against politics and comics i would say mostly they're opposed to the hijacking of already established characters to be used as a medium for social justice and, well, essentially overt left-wing politics. As well as uh, the culture that's kind of uh, pervasive in the comic book industry. Especially among comic book professionals. As in blacklisting and the sort of organized harassment campaigns. So this individual, Richard C. Meyer, I don't know the all the details. But he himself was a victim of an organized cancel culture, I would say, campaign or something like that. He lost an opportunity to work on projects with the comic book company. I'm not going to go into details, even the ones I remember. But essentially, this is what I will tell you. I'll give you a, a generalized story or generalized explanation. So he had a deal with a certain comic book company to make a comic book or a series of comic books. A particular influential comic book creator who's worked for both Marvel and DC, and if you're a comic book fan and you're familiar with the two main comic book companies, Marvel and DC, it's very likely that you know who this individual is. Now, this individual is a very talented individual. He has good stuff, despite the fact that he showed his true colors, he's a shady person, but essentially he ruined, he, so there was this comic book company, which probably knew who this individual was, but this individual probably didn't know who this comic book company was, but because this individual knew who Richard C. Meyer was, and is a social justice warrior, and therefore labeled Richard C. Meyer as somebody who was prob problematic, and a Nazi, and so on, 
he called this comic book company and used his influence to sever the deal between Richard C. Meyer and this comic book company. So there is a lawsuit going on. You can look into that if you want to. I would go to Richard C. Meyer to learn about it, but if you want all sides, you can figure out who this individual was, who this comic book company was, and who Richard C. Meyer is, and go from there. But let's continue with this comic. So this is an interesting comic because it's not really a social commentary, but it is a story taking elements of current events and exploring certain themes. So I stated earlier that comics gate is kind of, um, I would describe them as against the oversaturation of politics in, com in the comic book industry, especially uh, the biased sort of propagandized or propaganda leaking out from it, which stems from one political ideology rather than the other. So that's what makes this, and one of the biggest critics was Richard C. Meyer and on his YouTube channel, which is formerly known as Diversity in Comics, but it's now Comics Matter with your boy Zach. He's sort of, he, his YouTube channel was built around talking about this. So this is why I find this interesting, because in my mind, this is sort of Richard C. Meyer, this is what it seems anyway, Richard C. Meyer's way of saying, hey, you can make a comic book that is topical, but that is not alienating. You can comment on certain things that are happening, and you can play around with it, and maybe you can have your own narrative, but you don't have to alienate people doing it. And I'm trying my hardest to think if I were an average left-wing person, could I enjoy this comic book? And I would say, yeah, no, I could. It, I mean, if, if I was a social justice word, this has the things that I like. It has the main character, a black woman, who has half her head shaved. Now, you can say that it's uh, an idealized over-sexualization of woman, so you can always find something to get mad at if you're that type of individual. I'm not... And I can't understand that perspective, but I imagine a lot of people who are left-wing are reasonable and they're not offended by a character that has double to triple Ds. <laughs> so, there's that. Um, so, obviously this uh, virus, this coronavirus, for the last seven months has really dominated the headlines and has essentially been in the back, if not the forefront of everyone's thoughts. No matter, like, your opinion on the severity of this virus, pandemic uh, takes place after the start of a global pandemic, and the streets are kind of empty, people are out of work, so like I said, we follow a character whose uh, head is half-shaved, she has triple Ds, or double Ds, a very attractive female, and she's out of work, so you're dropped right into the story. She's robbing uh, this former employer of hers, taking money, taking tech, and it, it's not clear what this company did, and my assumption is that she had no idea what this company really did. She just knew that they had some stuff that she could take in order to essentially make some money. <clears throat> And it seems like the corporation is really into a lot more than what she initially knew. I'm not going to say what she initially thought, because she might have thought they were up to no good or something like that. And she hears, there's a board meeting, and she hears some very, very interesting information, and essentially gives up her position, because she gasps, she's caught. So... The main bulk of the book is her basically trying to evade security, military checkpoints, police, undercover agents, and the people staking out the houses of her friends and her family. And I'd like to state that I'm not an artist. I don't draw, sketch, color, paint, or anything like that. I'm not knowledgeable in art theory. My education in art begins with taking art classes in eighth grade and art my junior year in high school. But I like the art in this. It's good. Obviously, there's a range of comic book art from like newspapers to early Batman in the 60s to Frank Miller's 80s Daredevil or uh, uh, Infinite Crisis or Crisis on Infinite Earths. 
and to more modern day comics and obviously this has art of more modern day comics where everything's detailed it's not just everything that you don't want to see where it's like here's the main character and around her is just a random color you actually see the brick wall it's not just the street and maybe some of these lower buildings and then the car you see farther buildings in the back you see the skyline there's amazing detail like i stated earlier um and you're dropped right into the story, and you learn about the world that she lives in as the comic progresses. And there's funny references to some of what we witness. Some of what we've witnessed with uh, things and that we're dealing with right now. Richard C. Meyer's writing, he's able to navigate through current events without throwing certain narratives in your face. And... It cleverly takes current events and exploits it for the purpose of story and states the obvious. But even after you finish the cop the comic, you're, you don't feel like you've been lectured. You don't feel like you've been told to think a certain narrative. And what I see from this project, like I stated earlier from your boy Zach, it's a way of proving that you can have a comic book that is topical, but is not alienating to an audience. There is some satire that uh, one particular demographic who holds a certain viewpoint might feel insulted about, particularly the whole issue involving masks and shaming or fearing people who don't wear a mask. And, you know, people who think that wearing a mask is a virtue. And that type of attitude is the subject of uh, certain satirical elements. So there's a scene where earlier in this comic where the main character realizes that she forgot her mask. And then there's a scene later on, so it comes full circle, um, where people are saying, stay away, oh my god, because she's not wearing a mask. And that's referenced more than once in this comic book. And it's not to say that you shouldn't wear a mask. And it's not offering an opinion on it. It's just, if you have a sense of humor, you can laugh, and you can laugh at yourself, you, you find it kind of funny, because it's... Grabbing something that's real and taking it to its extreme application. Obviously, if you are a certain political persuasion, you have more potential to maybe get offended by this or take issue with it, as opposed to if you belong to the other political affiliation. But the matter of the fact is, is that most people can find it kind of humorous. So even if you're on the extreme that would react that way, you can still find it funny if you can laugh at yourself that you're being parodied. There's something wrong with laughing at yourself. And like I said, this comic is not commenting on whether or not you should wear a mask. If you like conspiracy theories, you'll like this comic. You don't need to be a conspiracy theorist because this book isn't perpetuating a conspiracy theory. But the, in the story, there is sort of an underlying conspiracy. If you like topical stories that are relevant, then you'll like this comic. And if you like comic books that are grounded, you'll also like this comic. Richard C. Meyer is a talented creator who, I, I've said before, has a million ideas working in his mind at any given point. And he has a creativity level that is completely off the charts.